chapter twenty five of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva the crisis one of the rooms in janey's suite had been turned into an office for general bent and here it was that all the conferences between the officers of the amalgamated reduction company and their underlings had taken place the big men of denver had all called to pay their respects to the bigger men from the east and some of them had taken part in the business of reorganizing the denver and california and its subsidiary companies but in spite of the conditions which had made bent's control of the railroad possible and the money the crowd would make out of it everybody in this intimate circle knew that the real object of the general's financial operations was the fight of the amalgamated reduction company for the ownership of the sawatch smelter the reorganization of the denver and california had now been completed and this morning orders had gone forth removing clinton simmons and all the old crowd from the active management of the road general bent sat at the end of the long desk table in conference with curtis janey cortland bent and a youngish oldish keen-eyed man in a cutaway coat and white waistcoat this was henry mccabe of denver attorney for the amalgamated the shrewdest lawyer west of the missouri river and one of the shrewdest east of it in front of mccabe on the desk was a leather portfolio from which a number of papers protruded behind him sat a clerk who had been taking down in shorthand his questions and the replies of two men at the farther end of the table these men were roughly dressed and though at the present moment each of them smoked one of curtis janey's remarkable cigars they sat aloof and uncomfortable on their gilt chairs assuming attitudes of ease they were far from feeling one of the strangers was max reimer the man who had discovered the lost vein in the lone tree mine the other was fritz weil one-time barkeeper of pete mulrennan's saloon in mesa city mccabe's examination had hardly been concluded when two cards were brought in by a page and handed to cortland bent he glanced at them and then without comment laid them on the table before his father hm, he's here now muttered the general staring grimly he's saved us the trouble of sending for him he tossed the cards on the table and rose there's nothing more you wanted to ask was there mccabe no sir nothing i know all i need to i thought so will you take these men downstairs but have them within call i may need them have harbison handy too curtis you'll stay of course and you court then to the waiting servant show these gentlemen up when ray and berkeley entered general bent had resumed his chair at the head of the table and cortland and curtis janey sat on either side of him the general's head was bent forward in its customary pose his shaggy brows lowered so that his eyes were scarcely visible but in the smile that twisted one end of his thin lips berkeley read a sardonic confidence in the outcome of the interview on entering the room ray fixed his wide gaze on general bent his eyes gleaming strangely and kept it on him as though fascinated until at a word from cortland bent he sank into a chair beside berkeley aside from this civility no amenities passed general bent had sunk back in his armchair coolly swinging his glasses by their cord while he keenly eyed berkeley who had begun talking curtis janey trying to bury his personal animosities in the present issue folded his stout arms resolutely and leaned forward upon the table we understand general bent that it is you representing eastern interests who have obtained a majority of the stock of the denver and california railroad company am i correctly informed general bent's head dropped the fraction of an inch 
your information is correct he said shortly as general counsel for the sawatch short line berkeley went on i'm here to inform you that in accordance with a contract entered into in march of last year the denver and california made certain traffic arrangements with my company conditional upon the completion of the sawatch short line upon a specified date my company accepted these conditions and has succeeded in carrying out to the letter the terms of its agreements one moment mr berkeley put in the general with a vague attempt to be humorous if i may ask what is the sawatch short line a telegraph stage or railroad company ray's jaw set and he glared angrily but berkeley only smiled a railroad company sir he said with suave directness controlling a right of way from pueblo to sawatch the most direct line from the sawatch to the market our tracks are laid our signals in place our stations built and this morning we are advised that the denver and california is running its first train through from pueblo to sawatch the three men started and berkeley grinned i may add that in addition to mr clinton who at ten o'clock this morning had not yet retired from the presidency of your road the train also carries other officers of your company as well as stockholders of mine a lunch has been provided at the northern terminus of the road and a spirit of harmony dominates the occasion one which i'm sure you'll admit is noteworthy in every particular general bent's brow twitched ominously i hope mr berkeley you'll come to the point without delay he said willingly the sawatch short line has fulfilled its part of the contract the present officers of your company are willing to carry out theirs the object of our visit was merely to reassure ourselves of your friendly disposition the friendly disposition of the newly elected officers of your road and to arrange with all proper haste a practical schedule for the operation of the line larry paused and sank back in his chair with a smile general bent had risen and was leaning forward over the table toward berkeley his face a thundercloud you want a schedule do you he growled his voice deepening well i'll give you one i'll give it to you now and it won't take a great while either as long as i'm in control of the denver and california railroad company not a wheel shall turn on your little jerkwater line within a mile of pueblo that's my answer to your proposition our yard limit marks your terminus do you understand get your oar there if you can find any he finished brutally but berkeley refused to lose his temper you're aware of course he said coolly that such a policy is likely to prove expensive you'll have to show that i think we will but i can't believe that you repudiate this contract said larry tapping a paper with his forefinger i didn't make that contract i would never have made it the courts will pass on its validity then this is final absolutely is there anything more you want to say i think that's all general bent said berkeley rising i had hoped you would have been willing to meet us in a fair spirit failing to discover that either in your attitude or your demeanor i suppose there is nothing else to be said one moment interrupted the general sinking back in his chair with an effort at self-control sit down please there's something more to be said something which you both may be interested to hear and he addressed his remarks directly to ray i can't say that i've watched your efforts to put your plans through without some interest mr ray under other circumstances i may say that i would have been compelled to a kind of admiration for your fruitless perseverance it's all the more remarkable in the face of the obstacles with which you have had to contend but we are fully informed as to your actual financial strength 
and i think the time has come when we may draw aside the veil and speak frankly mr berkeley informs me that he intends to proceed against the denver and california railroad company to do this of course he must have the proper authority are you sure that he can get it larry smiled i think so to do so he requires does he not a majority vote of the denver and sawatch railroad company as well as that of the short line those two companies and the development company as i understand it being in a way dependent one upon the other that is correct the general settled back in his chair swinging his gold eyeglasses daintily how is he going to get that authority he asked his smile infuriated ray who replied quickly by virtue of my control of all companies he said crisply your control said bent you have no control i know your resources to a dollar mr ray to-day at twelve o'clock your denver and sawatch railroad company stock will be in my possession ray exchanged a glance with berkeley and laughed dryly oh you're really coming in with us at last are you general he said that's fine and then with a chuckle your name on the directorate of the denver and sawatch ought to have some weight with the new officers of the denver and california the frown on bent's brows deepened the point of this joke did not dawn on him that stock has always been for sale ray went on everything i have is for sale when the man comes along who can afford to buy it it's funny though general bent that you haven't said anything to me about it a slight twitching of bent's lips and the nervous movement of his fingers among the papers on the table was this really a joke or only the last manifestation of ray's colossal impudence he chose to think it the latter it hasn't been necessary to say anything to you about it sir he said sternly to-day at noon two million and a half of that stock is thrown on the market at a bargain at a very great bargain but i'm the only man in the united states who would dare to touch it i'm the only man in the world except yourself to whom it's worth a dollar i know your resources down to the last dime you haven't the money to take it up i have at noon that stock will be mine so will you be mine your two railroads and your smelter at the price i choose to pay for them jeff sat quietly one of his hands toying with the top of an inkstand which he was regarding with friendly interest are you sure general he asked calmly general bent clasped his twitching fingers to keep them still why sir what do you mean that you are mistaken that's all that stock is for sale but you'll still have to come to me to buy it how because i paid off those notes this morning that stock is in my safe deposit vault and there it's going to stay unless and he smiled sarcastically unless you still want it general bent's face paled and grew red then purple he struggled to his feet with difficulty his plans didn't often miscarry and the fact that one of the links of the chain he had tested so carefully had failed to hold completely mystified him how where had jeff ray succeeded in raising eight hundred thousand dollars when the limit of his borrowing capacity had long ago been reached for months the wonderful secret organization of the amalgamated had been at work prying into the affairs of ray's companies and had figured his possible resources to the thinnest part of a hair he had not sold the lone tree or even the smallest interest in it and yet there he was apparently entrenched as firmly as ever general bent gasped in amazement only the interposition of providence could have made such a thing possible 
cortland bent had gone into the adjoining room suddenly and ray knew he was verifying this information over the telephone but general bent did not wait for him to return to his mind this news needed no verification it was time for him to play his last card and his best you d blank d young scoundrel he said in a hoarse whisper his voice trembling with fury while ray and berkeley rose angrily and faced him i won't mince matters with you any longer you thought when you stole that mine three years ago that you had covered all your tracks and made yourself safe from civil suits mr berkeley planned well we fought you in the courts and lost i suppose you thought we had given up we did let up but it was only to get a firmer hold we've got it now and we're going to use it you stole that mine trespassed on our property at night and tried to murder one of our employees you assaulted him and would have killed him if you hadn't been interrupted that's a lie said jeff calmly you'll have the chance to prove that you lured max reimer into a gambling den and put him out of business so that he couldn't prevent my son from signing that lease that's another lie he was drunk and violent and drew a gun on me my partner struck him down his head hit the edge of a table nonsense sir we have a witness who verifies reimer in every particular who swears he saw from the doorway who is your witness fritz weil i see you remember him he ray laughed uneasily yes i remember fritz bent came one step nearer waving a trembling hand at cortland who had returned and was trying to restrain him but the general shook him off we dropped those civil suits because we thought it was wise to do so and because we knew that in time we would be in a position to win in other ways there are other processes of law besides the civil ones and those are the ones we choose to take before you can leave denver you'll be arrested on charges of abduction and conspiracy i suppose you know what that means jeff grew a shade paler his eyes blazing their resentment at the old man who stood tottering before him you do that you cried jeff hoarsely struggling hard to keep himself under control you'd hire men to send me to the penitentiary because i've balked your plans because i've beaten you in a fair fight against odds you you ray clenched his fist and took a step forward but larry berkeley seized him by the arm and cortland bent stepped between general bent pushed his son aside go cart call mccabe we'll see at this moment there was an interruption wait a moment court please said a voice the door into mr janey's parlor had opened suddenly and mrs cheyne had entered the room and while the general eyed her angrily too amazed to speak she strode quickly forward into the group and continued quietly there has been a mistake a terrible mistake if you'll let me explain general bent was the first to recover his senses rita leave the room at once he commanded no she said firmly not until you hear what i have to say i can't listen now another time he fumed no now i'm going to save you from doing something that you'll regret the rest of your life while the general questioned jeff had turned and seized her by the arm his eyes pleading rita he muttered you know for god's sake don't not now illustration rita he muttered you know yes she said firmly no one else will i must cornelius bent and cortland had watched ray in amazement his face had suddenly grown white and drawn you have no right to tell him rita he persisted it's my secret not yours you can't i tell you but she eluded him and faced the general you must listen to me cousin cornelius 
curtis janey who had been watching ray closely now interposed let her speak general it seems to be something of more than usual importance very well he growled but be brief i can't tell it here she insisted i must speak to you alone alone why it's a private matter will you come into the next room there's no one there she turned and was moving toward the door when jeff's large figure blocked the way you don't know what you're doing rita he whispered you can't i forbid it but berkeley who had been watching the general took jeff by the arm and held him by main force stand aside sir said general bent roughly brushing by if there's something you want concealed it's something i want to hear and he followed banging the door behind him jeff made a movement as though he would follow then turned toward cortland bent and janey who had watched this extraordinary change in the demeanor of their enemy with wonder and some curiosity jeff stared at them wildly and took up his hat saying in a strange voice come larry i must get away from here at once and opening the door he fled madly down the corridor berkeley paused a moment we have no intention of dodging any issues he said quietly if any of you gentlemen want to see mr ray or me you can find us both at the weatherall ranch tomorrow. end of chapter twenty five